we reorient and understand the significance of Christ's sacrifice for us. Because here we see the Israelites screaming to Moses, did you deliver us up from Egypt to die here? Good God Almighty. Did you deliver us up from Egypt to die here? For them, death represented a failure. Death represented a failure. Death represented the victory of Satan. ran ahead of myself. The victory of Pharaoh, then the victory of Satan, but it's the same point. Now, that exodus, flash forward several centuries. Mm -hmm. Hill of Calvary. Jesus says, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Matthew 27, verse 46. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? There's a lot of resonance between that cry in Matthew. It's also in Mark. And this cry in Exodus 14. God, God, why have you abandoned us to die here? After you delivered us from Egypt. knew what he was going to do from the moment he called Moses even before how he was going to free the Israelites through the ten miracles how he was going to lead them through the desert mm -hmm. up to that point where they had their backs against the sea and their faces toward the Egyptians mm. why have you abandoned us Lord but it wasn't about individuals. It was about the body of the children of Israel. <clears throat> because that cry in Exodus 14 was changed in Matthew 27. Mm -hmm. No longer a cry of defeat, but a shout of victory. Because it was never God's intention to abandon the children of Israel. Nor is it his intention to abandon us if we act right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but on the cross, God abandoned himself so he wouldn't have to abandon us. Mm -hmm. What appeared a failure of Christ was the victory of God. Amen. What appeared a failure of God through Moses was actually the culmination of a great plan from the foundation of the world. See, notice, God hardened Pharaoh's heart to even chase after the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. The God of this world who was already defeated went a running after the children of Israel to defeat them, to try to re-enslave them, not knowing that he was already defeated. Mm -hmm. Now, it's interesting. It's a loose analogy that I'll make between Moses and the children of Israel and modern day ministers and, 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 and uh, congregations. If ministers are unsure of the word that they preach, how in the world will the people they minister to ever be sure of the word they preach? Mm -hmm. See, God told Moses what he was going to do. And he did what he said he was going to do. He brought them to where he said he was going to bring them. Okay? Mm -hmm. So they get to the sea. Moses is hearing the cries, and he's like, Shut up! 
The Lord's going to fight for you. You just stand still. I would imagine that he's saying that if they stand still looking at the enemy rather than facing the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. so you got to catch this. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on. Mm -hmm. Looking at the enemy mm -hmm. instead of mm -hmm. facing the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The only way to part ways is to turn around. Come on. And mm -hmm. See. Mm -hmm. Moses said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord while they're looking at the enemy. Oh, come on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God said, why are you crying unto me? Mm. Tell the people to turn around and go forward. Come on, somebody. Come on. Mm -hmm. Woo. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to affect an efficacious parting of the ways, we've got to believe this from cover to cover. We've got to eat sleep and witness it every moment of every day. We've got to believe that every single miraculous thing that happens in here, every gift, every power that God says that we can possess, if we but faithfully obey this word, is available to us. Mm. And that we must be used of God to display his wonders in this world. Mm. Mm. If we're going to be in his kingdom in the end. Mm. Because anything less means that we're still in Egypt. Mm. That we're still bowing down to the God of this world. Mm. Mm. Begins with our intention. Begins with our intention. So are we confessing Christ while we're still looking at Egypt and the Egyptians? Are we confessing Christ while we're looking on the way to our deliverance. Mm. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Good God. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, some of us may die. But death is gain. Mm. Hallelujah. Yes, some of us may suffer. <clears throat> but it's all for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Why are we afraid? Because we really don't believe God. You know, it's funny. The end of uh, chapter uh, 13 in Exodus, when God is leading them, uh, Exodus 13, 17, and it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest peradventure the people repent when they see war, and they return to Egypt. But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. Harnessed out of the land of Egypt. God is our loving Father. You know, I remember the earliest memory I have is when I was a baby and it's my parents holding me up in the bed like this and I'm looking down on them and they're smiling at me they have me in their hands just looking at me loving me smiling at me crying these are the same parents who would strap me in whenever we take a ride somewhere so that I wouldn't get hurt while they were driving these are the same parents that took care of all of my needs, physical, monetary, emotional, such as they could, spiritual, such as they could. The same parents who put me on their shoulders, but mom, had, as long as she could, because she's short, she's five four. Um, but dad, up till I was around about 12 or 13, he's 6'6", 235 pounds. But he carried me when I couldn't walk. When when I used to have sickle cell, he carried me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now, as I near 